As promised, I'm back with another video where I'm going to swatch the second row from Denise's Earth Friendly uh, watercolor palette put together from Da Vinci watercolors. And this is uh, one of the reasons I bought this palette and one of the reasons um, I wanted to buy this because I'm not one to choose earth colors. Browns and um, all these ochres, I, I don't know what to do with them in and painting. I don't know how to use them with other colors and there's there are a lot of options there when it comes to buying earth tones and browns and all sorts of golds but it's so nice to see somebody who has some experience with them who um who can tell you what they use them for what colors they mix well so anyway i just like sometimes for the hard work to be done for me and Denise put together a very nice collection of earth tones. One thing she mentioned about this colors, I think she thought that there were too many yellows, but I cannot wait to swatch them because even from this uh, swatch she provides in the palette, you can tell there's subtle differences and I'm sure when you mix them with other colors, those differences are gonna come through. So I have here my Master Touch round 12 and the cards that I used using um, I made using arches uh, watercolor paper and I usually put the uh, pigment number the color name and the brand on my card except for from when I have like in this case we had the da Vinci red I didn't feel the need to put da Vinci again so let's start and I'm gonna start from um, left to right I have here raw umber. When I started watercolors, um, I knew I had to buy uh, burnt sienna. That was one of the mixes you uh, are recommended in most of the uh, books. So you can get a nice dark color mixing it with uh, ultramarine. But raw umber, even from the swatches I've seen, is not a color that um, I don't know anybody would say well I have to have it I'm sure it has many uses I'm sure in uh, paintings it, it has its own place and given that it's provided in this beautiful set I'm sure I'm gonna learn how to use it it's a very nice brown kind of on the neutral side it doesn't lean towards red or yellow. Definitely not a color that I would know what to do with. But I can wait to see some of Denise's videos and look for ways uh, to paint with this color and subjects that would um, that would will need this kind of color. So again, I'm a brown maybe a little towards green i can tell we'll see when it's dry next it's burnt umber and from just my observation any color that has the burnt uh, in their name to me it tends to to lean towards a red like if you would mix a little bit of red with the color like with raw umber if i mix a little red um I'm thinking I might get something that's burnt umber. Very similar to raw umber except again that uh, reddish reddish tone. I can see painting um, tree trunks, definitely animals. I'm, I'm not inspired by by this kind of colors. I do like them. They're very nice. And I can't wait to compare it with a few tubes that I bought. This is a color, the Violet Iron Oxide. Um, just the name. I'm curious to see how much violet I can detect in this color 
It does look slightly opaque than the previous two. And it has a nice violety undertone. For me, it's a little cooler than a maroon, maybe. I can also compare it with um, the Perlene Maroon. I like this lighter part. It's a very soft, mauve color, and it looks like the pigment is separating. And this Archie's paper, um, I believe it's what you would say a uh, cold press. It does have some texture. Again, I'll set it aside and we'll see how it dries. And next is Indian Red. And I worked at a painting where I needed some um, some colors for some leaves and I use some of this Indian red it has a nice rusty touch to it. it it is opaque but it's quite intense for an art color and I really enjoyed it You can see uh, just by painting over the dark line how opaque this color is. One thing I picked up from other uh, watercolor artists is that mixing opaque colors, it's more likely to create mud colors. And from my understanding, the opacity can, can change the way a color mixes. And I, I think I talked about that in my previous video when I mentioned my miss buy when I bought the Horizon Blue from um, Holbein. So again, beautiful color, reddish brown, this Indian red, um, opaque, as you can tell. Next is the very well-known Burnt Sienna. I bought a tube of burnt sienna from Sennelier and it might have been just my lack of experience with earth colors or that particular brand. I didn't quite care for it. Later I bought uh, a transparent iron oxide from Daniel Smith and although it's a sli slightly reddish, I like it much better. I would, I would call it a warm brown. I can tell there's some yellow undertone to it. Another reason why I'm not very successful with earth tones is I seem to pair them with the wrong primary color and then I end up with a sort of an unbalance. Painting when it comes to color So that's something I'll probably have should make a series of it pairing art colors So colors from this bottom row with some of the primaries to make some appealing color combinations Let me know if you're interested in something like that Now this is a color. I think I used a little bit when I did my flower painting in my album and this is the Quinacridum Burn Orange PO48. And since Denise is not a fan of orange, she didn't include something like a Perignon orange or another bright orange. I'm curious to see how this color looks. Oh, and it's very nice. I wouldn't even call this an earth tone, to be honest. 
I am a big fan of um, red oranges and I think this would pair really well in a painting where I want to showcase a red orange color and then I need just something more toned down beautiful beautiful burnt orange I don't think I have anything like it in my collection so thank you Denise for introducing this color that I probably would have never picked myself next is one of the first kind of yellow gold golden colors and this is a raw sienna and it's a PBR7 does look like it's slightly uh, semi-opaque and I think Denise on her um, channel in her swatching video she gives a little bit more information about these colors if not the um, Da Vinci provides uh, in their set and on their website plenty of information Very nice, very luminous color. I'll let it dry and see how it looks once it's dry. And then the raw sienna deep. This leans toward, leans in my opinion, towards the gold. Slightly neutral. The color in the pan, it's not very appealing I mean it has that greenish yellow greenish color but on the paper I think I like it slightly better than the raw sienna it's it's definitely more transparent if not transparent and it does have a warmth to it I cannot really explain You could even paint um, some wilted grass. There's some on my way to work. There's a field with some overgrown grass and it looks just like this. Very, very nice color. And now the gold ochre. This is a, a mix, it's a PY42 and PY83. I wonder if this is an attempt to recreate the famous Daniel Smith quinacridone gold. Unfortunately, I came to the watercolor game after um, the famous now um, quinacridone gold original recipe was discontinued so the only one I could find in the store was the new recipe and I can give you a swatch of that to compare with this gold ochre and again on the top of my swatch I try to get a concentrated um, value and then I'm gonna water it down slightly. See how light, how the color looks in a lighter wash down kind of version. This is a nice golden yellow, slightly opaque. But we'll let it dry and we'll see how it looks. Next, we have one of the three greens. 
that made it on the second row of Denise's beautiful palette and this is green gold PI 129 I know different brands carry this uh, I don't have this particular pigment but I always wanted to see how it looks I have a few greens I can compare it with just so you can get an idea And um, I think um, I'm in love with this color. I could paint paintings. It's almost like a chartreuse. Slightly uh, brownish and uh, semi-transparent. But this glow when it's diluted, it reminds me of spring leaves like when the leaves come up on trees or um, leaves on a tree that are in sunlight and I have a, a photograph I wanted to make a painting after and the leaves have this particular color so this is definitely a keeper let me know if you are a fan of the green gold and what did you use it for how do you mix it with other colors? But this probably is my new favorite color. It's just gorgeous. It's luminous. It has an, an unusual feel about it. I'll let it dry and we'll compare it with other colors in just a minute. And I'm going to skip Denise's green. I'm going to leave that to the end. Just because it's such a particular color. It's something that she put together. Uh, her own recipe for replacing the beautiful sap green, I believe, from Daniel Smith that was made with the old quinacridone gold. So the last color in this set is the Perlin Green. It's a PBK uh, 31. And I believe Daniel Smith has a version of this pigment. And I believe most um, watercolor companies have. I don't have this in any other brand. I do have a forest green from Sennelier that's similar to this one. But that particular tube, it's made with a mix of several pigments. I think two, maybe three. It's a very deep, cool green. Definitely lean, leans towards blue. Which reminds me of pine tree, Christmas trees. A lot of people mention that they like to use this to paint shadow areas when they paint greenery. When colors are, um, they have a um, high value or they're darker. In their mast on it's hard to see any deposits on my black line but we'll give it some time and we'll see and last but not least the Denise green it's a blend a convenience mixture uh, PY 129 so remember they're beautiful green gold and PB 60 another favorite color of mine the inventory in blue Since I've never had a sap green in my watercolor collection or have I tried the Daniel Smith sap green, I know I can tell how this compares to the previous greens, but this is just a perfect green. You can just pick it out of the tube, paint your greenery, add a little bit of the golden green in the sunny side areas on a, where the sun hits the leaves and then maybe some indentrine for the darker shades and you got yourself an instant landscape I 
Here it is. I'm going to look through my swatches, get some comparison going on. And yes, I should be back in just a little bit. And here is my comparison part of the video. You can see this color, the Burnt Umber, the Raw Sienna and the Raw Sienna Deep. I have nothing that comes close to these colors in my collection. You can see how they're different from one another. Each one has their own unique characteristics and I can't wait to see what I can do with them. Another color I don't have anything like it is this beautiful green gold. The only thing I can compare it with is this Sennelier Phthalo Green Light and you can probably tell they're not even in the same family. This is definitely a yellow green and this is just a neon kind of green, spring green. Next, I want to look at this raw umber. Um, the closest thing I found in my collection is this Daniel Smith Hematite Genuine. And as you can tell, this is a black that granulates and has a neutral um, brownish undertone that's very close to this raw umber. But of course, this is more of a uniform color. It doesn't have that separation that the um, Genuine colors from Daniel Smith have. Another com co comparison I want to do is this uh, Violet Iron Oxide with the Piemontine, Piemontite Genuine from Daniel Smith. They are somewhat similar. They all have this violet -y color. Of course, this Genuine one has the interesting granulation and separation and almost like a dark blue violety uh, shadow when it's uh, watered down but it's very close to this violet iron oxide also the piemontite genuine i could say you can also compare it with this da vinci red it doesn't get as dark and of course there's no granulation but you can see the similarities between this color and then I have the Perlin Maroon, uh, definitely was put, put in between the Alizarin Crimson and the Rose, but you can see it would, it would match well also with the Indian Red and this uh, Violet Iron Oxide. This has definitely more Chroma than this other two. Next, I can compare the Transparent Red Oxide. From Daniel Smith this is the one I chose instead of a burnt sienna and this is the burnt sienna from da Vinci the Daniel Smith one it's more on the red side and this is the burnt sienna from Sennelier this definitely is more orangey if you can look compared to the quinacridone burnt orange they have some similarities. One thing I didn't like about Sennelia Burns Unite is the way it granulates. And it, it's very opaque. I don't know if you can tell the deposits on this line. And when I mix it with other colors, um, I didn't get the results I wanted. But then, again, I'm a beginner. I'm not even sure what I look for when I mix colors. And this is the Quinacridone Gold from Dania Smith. And this is the blend the P, the new formula po48 and py150 and compare with this gold ochre this is definitely has more natural appeal very soft um, feeling to it this looks a little bright you can t tell the yellow coming through in the orange mostly in the mass tone and this is the Perline Green from Da Vinci, and this is the Forest Green. And also I have a Jadeite Genuine from Daniel Smith. This is definitely the Perline color, uh, grayed out. The Forest Green also has a, a black pigment in it, but it has the uh, PG7, that strong green comes through with that yellow. And then the Jadeite. In typical genuine colors you have a lot of 
granulation, a lot of interesting effects going on. And last but not least, the Denise Green and the App Green Appetite Genuine. I feel they're they're very close in their tones. Of course, the Green Appetite has the beautiful, unique granulation. And I think on this Arches paper, it comes out more than anything else. Uh, very nice, very natural greens, both of them. I can see they're using landscape. Thank you so much for staying with me through this uh, unbox and reveal and swatch. Stay tuned if you want to see more paintings that I will plan to make with this beautiful palette and a few color exercises just so we know what colors we can mix, how they behave, and what can we do with them. Thank you so much.